This is the brand new M2 2022 iPad Pro, which is more expensive than before and the changes that this iPad has received are honestly the smallest changes that any iPad before it has received. So let's test this out uh, and answer the question, is it really that bad of an upgrade? Now, you may have heard us mention Dreamy Tech on the channel before. They've now sent us their new L10S Ultra Robot Vacuum to check out. Tune in later in this video to hear why this robot vacuum is so unique. So the unboxing experience is pretty much identical to all the previous iPad Pros with one exception, and that is the cable, which is now a USB Type-C to USB Type-C braided cable. So that is an upgrade over uh, the standard rubber cable that we had before. Okay, now there are three main new features with this new iPad Pro. The M2 chip, the Apple Pencil Hover, and the Wi-Fi 6E. And I want to start off with the Apple Pencil Hover because I think that is uh, the most interesting new feature. Interesting enough, we were just trying to test the new Apple Pencil Hover and uh, it didn't work. And that's because there is an update out of the box to enable that. So if you just got your new iPad and the feature doesn't work, make sure you update to iPadOS 16.1. Okay, so our iPad is now updated to iPadOS 16.1 and the Apple Pencil Hover does actually work. So long story short, you can just hover above any app to uh, select it, kind of like uh, in the same way that uh, you would select it with the mouse cursor if you have uh, the keyboard connected. So if I go into, let's say the App Store, you can see that now I can select, um, I can highlight some of the buttons. I cannot actually highlight the apps in the App Store, uh, but I can highlight uh, the menu buttons. And I think where this will be super useful uh, would be for graphic designers and in apps that take advantage, proper advantage of the Apple Pencil, such as the Notes app, Procreate and stuff like that. As in these apps, you can actually see your cursor on the screen uh, and it actually works from a fairly high distance. So you don't need to uh, be super, super close to the iPad. I think Apple said that it works from about 12 uh, millimeters. And that's pretty much the idea. It allows you to see where your Apple Pencil cursor will be uh, before you actually touch the screen, which could be very useful for uh, designers when you're trying to adjust the brush size. Like for example, when uh, I was using Procreate to just sketch some stuff, this is obviously not my drawing, uh, but I constantly had to undo uh, when I was adjusting my brush size. But now in the new version, which by the way, this is still the old one, but uh, according to Apple in the new version, you can just adjust the uh, brush size very easily and then see it adjusted live uh, in this Apple Pencil Hopper feature. Now, I do want to mention that uh, this is not a hardware feature. This is purely software. And that's because if you have an older iPad, uh, with iPadOS 16, there's a feature called Hover Text. And you can actually use the Apple Pencil to highlight specific uh, things on the screen, just like you can with uh, the M2 iPad. But it is a cool feature, and I do think that this is one of those things that the iPad should have had uh, from the very start. Now, the next big new feature on this new iPad Pro is that M2 processor. So we're going to do a video export, essentially some real world testing, to see how the M2 chip compares uh, to the M1. So we're going to transfer a nine gigabyte video file from our external SSD onto the iPad Pro. So this took three minutes and 24 seconds on the iPad Pro compared to three minutes and 33 seconds on the M1 iPad Air and 11 minutes and eight seconds on the new 10th generation iPad. So even though our drive is a Thunderbolt drive, uh, it doesn't really max out the speeds of Thunderbolt. So you can still get faster speeds from an iPad Pro uh, compared to an iPad Air because of that 40 gigabit per second connection compared to 10 on the Air. So now let's export that video that we imported uh, from iMovie on both of these iPads, the iPad Pro M2 and the iPad Air M1 um, and see how much faster the M2 chip actually is. Okay, so we've just finished the exports and the results were very surprising. The M2 iPad Pro took 12 minutes and 24 seconds. The M1 iPad Air took 12 minutes and 14 seconds. So the M1 was actually faster than the M2 here. Then we tested a 2020 iPad Pro, so the one with the A12Z chip. And this one took 12 minutes and 23 seconds, so a second faster then the M2 iPad Pro. Then we tested my old 2018 iPad Pro, which has the A12X and four gigabytes of RAM, so half the amount of the M2 model. And this one was slower, but only by a tiny bit, taking 12 minutes and 37 seconds. And then we also tested the base 10th generation iPad with the A14 chip and four gigabytes of RAM. And this one took 14 minutes and two seconds. So this one was considerably slower than all the other iPads that we tested. Now, even though this is just one single use case, I do think that it still shows 
that the M2 chip and even the M1 are not that big of an upgrade over the previous iPad Pros in terms of the raw performance. I think that where the M chip really shines is when it comes to proper Pro apps. Sadly, we don't really have any of them which are exclusive to uh, the M chips. However, the Venture Resolve is actually coming to the iPads. They haven't really said this yet, but I do believe that this will be exclusive to the M1 and the M2 iPads. So having a robot vacuum comes in very handy for us, especially one like the L10S Ultra that can also clean our hard floors uh, with a rotary mop that spins at 180 RPMs. It tops up its own cleaning solution and the removable base plates will even deep clean the mop automatically to prevent any nasty buildup. As for the vacuum, with 5300 PAs of suction and a rubber brush, it will pick up anything without getting tangled. And the Quiet Dual Boost 2.0 self-emptying tech is also a great perk. It has the option to avoid carpets or raise the mop to keep it running smoothly on them. AI navigation and the RGB camera can be used to give you a custom clean by setting no-go zones, virtual walls, and cleaning schedules while also detecting household obstacles. And lastly, it is compatible with Alexa, Siri, and Google Assistant. Check it out by using the link below. And the only other reason to maybe consider getting an M1 or M2 model is for stage manager support when using an external display, which at the moment only works on the M1 and the M2 models. But other than that, honestly, you might as well just get a 2020 or 2018 iPad Pro, especially since you can get them refurbished for the same price or an even lower price than the new 10th generation base iPad. And the last big new feature of this new 2022 iPad Pro is Wi-Fi 6E. Now, theoretically, with Wi-Fi 6E, you can get speeds of up to 2.4 gigabits per second compared to 1.2 on the iPad Air and the base 10 generation iPad. However, our network, you know, doesn't have those speeds. Um, and with our network, we got 152 down on the iPad Pro compared to 100 down on the Air and 86.5 down on the base iPad. So it is faster. Uh, it's just that if you want to get those speeds, the high speeds, you also need a really, really fast network. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. There is one more change, and that is in terms of the image processing. So the M2 iPad Pro now supports Smart HDR4 uh, compared to Smart HDR3 on the previous models. And because of this, the image processing is a tiny bit better. So if you take a look at these two images side by side, there is less noise on uh, the new iPad Pro's photo. Other than that, they are very similar when it comes to the colors and everything else. So my final advice on this new iPad Pro M2 would be just just don't buy it. It's, it's really expensive and you can buy a refurbished 2018 or 2020 model uh, for some great prices, almost half the price of this iPad. Uh, and you get pretty much, you know, the same features aside from the Apple Pencil hover. So if you really need that, maybe, but I honestly don't think that it's uh, a game changing feature for it to warrant that much of a price increase. And for those of you who are maybe thinking that, oh, I'm gonna spend this much to get an iPad Pro and a keyboard because I wanna use it as my main device. Sure, you can, but at the same time, the price difference between the iPad Pro and the Mac is actually not like you would expect it to be. The Macs are actually cheaper than an iPad Pro with a keyboard connected. And they're also uh, way more capable than the iPad Pro is. I'll give you an example. The 11 inch 128 gigabyte iPad Pro in the UK costs 900 pounds. Now, if you want to bump that to 256, which would match the uh, all the MacBooks, it's going to cost you 1,020 pounds. If you want to add in a keyboard, that's going to cost you 1,340 pounds. And keep in mind, this is for the 11-inch iPad Pro. The M2 MacBook Air, for example, costs 1,250 pounds. So it is considerably cheaper than this small 11-inch iPad Pro with a keyboard. And the M1 MacBook Air, which is still a great choice, that one costs 1,000 pounds. I think it gets even crazier when you compare that to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with a keyboard because that will cost you 1,750 pounds. Close to double the price of an M1 MacBook Air. And very close in price to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is far superior in terms of board performance, display, usability, ports, and everything else. Of course, the iPad does have some advantages over the MacBook, stuff like uh, 5G, the MacBook doesn't have that, Apple Pencil support, which I would say is the biggest one, and then the touchscreen, but other than that, the Mac is superior in every single way. But personally, I'm still gonna be sticking with my 2018 iPad Pro for the foreseeable future. And the thing is, for me to upgrade from the 2018 iPad Pro, I would need a better display, like I need a mini LED, preferably an OLED, and most importantly, 
an improved battery life. Because I feel like with the iPads, fun fact, the battery life hasn't changed since the original one. Every single iPad since the first one in 2010 has had the same 10 hour battery life, which compared to a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, which have, you know, numbers like 18 or 20, uh, it just doesn't compare. But let me know, what do you guys think in terms of this new M2 iPad Pro and in terms of the iPads in general? I'm Daniel, this has been Zenof Tech and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.